Welcome to another Flashlights 101. This time we're going to be talking about the switches that you're going to find on enthusiast lights. There's two main categories, mechanical switches and e-switches. Now within those two main categories, there's a couple subcategories, like you might have forward clicky mechanical switches, reverse clicky mechanical switches, e-switches that operate on just the one switch, or combinations of e-switches and mechanical switches like we have in the back here. So let's take a look at each one of these and see what they offer. Let's start with the mechanical switches. And the mechanical switches are these guys right here and these two. Now, this side over here, these are the forward clicky. Now, what's the difference between forward and reverse clicky? Well, forward clicky just means that when you go to push it, it's going to come on before it clicks, and then the click is going to keep it in the mode that you've selected. So for example, as I go to push this, I'm gonna do a light tap and the light will come on. And then if I push further, it clicks and now it stays on. So again, I push and it clicks, I let go and it comes off. So think of it this way, forward clicky comes on before the click. So forward, it comes on and then you keep pushing and it clicks, all right? Now reverse is kind of the opposite, meaning that on a reverse clicky, you push it, it's gonna go all the way in, the light won't come on at all, but then once you hit all the way in and release, it will click and then the light will come on. So let's take a look at that. So I start pushing and you see nothing's happening. I go all the way in and I just heard a slight click. Now when I let go of my finger, now you see the light is on. Okay, now the reason why you might choose a forward clicky versus a reverse clicky has to do with how you change the modes. So for example, on a forward clicky, if I wanna cycle through these modes, I'm going to lightly press, let go, lightly press, and I'm gonna keep doing that. So I'm just kinda of tap, tap, tapping, and you can see it going between different, well, let's try it again. So that's high. Let's see here, all right, there you go. There's low, medium, and high. Now once I hit what I want, I'm gonna do a solid click all the way in and release. So watch, I go high, I go low. Let's see here, let's try and get back to low. There we go, low. So now that I like what I'm at and I'm doing a light tap, I'm gonna push all the way in and let go, and now I'm on low. Now if I wanna change modes, I have to actually turn the light off. I have to come back out and tap again and then click it in and release. So forward clicky is interesting because the only way you can change modes is by actually clicking it off and then back on. Now, what's great about forward clicky is it's good for momentary. So for example, if I tap, 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 I can do like Morse code or something by just tap, tap, tapping on the back. The downside to Ford Clicky is that mode changing, as you just saw, is a little cumbersome. I have to actually be in an off state. So for example, if I'm on and I wanna to go to like high or low, I have to click it off, tap, 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 find what I want, and then click it back on. It's not terrible, but that's just how it works. And these two guys, exactly the same. So this one happens to have red secondaries, and then you can see as I'm I'm just, you know, lightly tapping, right? Tap, 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 click. All right, same over here with the Lao Lima. Tap, 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 click, and I'm there. So I wanna switch back to blue. I gotta push all the way in, let go. Tap, 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 find my blue. There it is, click in, let go. All right, so that's Ford clicky. Now let's look at the reverse clicky. Now this one, isn't any good for signaling. So if you care about doing Morse code or some kind of like strobing at people manually, reverse clicky isn't gonna be your jam. But it's better for switching modes. So for example, I click all the way in and out, right, all the way in and out. But now that it's on, I just lightly tap. See that? It's really nice for switching modes because you have uninterrupted output as you cycle through, okay? So I guess the way to think about it, and these are both ray lights, this 
Pineapple Mini works the same way. So I like this one because you can actually see what the switch is doing really well. So being reverse clicky, I go all the way in, let go, and it turns on, and then tap, 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 right? To get turn off, all the way in again, and out, okay? So to sum up, forward clicky, if you want momentary, reverse clicky, if you want to switch modes easier. To be honest, not a huge difference between the two. They're both mechanical, and when they are clicked out in the off position, power is cut. So there's no drain on these lights. So right now, there is no connection between uh, the battery and the driver, so nothing's being drained on these lights right here. Okay, now that's in contrast to the next light we're going to talk about, which is E switches. On an E switch, the switch is always live because the power is always running through it. So, let me give you an example here. If you take a look at this light here, I got auxiliary lights on, and notice that there wasn't any auxiliary lights on these. I mean, I had some secondary lights, but you can't have auxiliary lights because the power's cut right now. But since the power is always on, on this MSR KR4, you can have auxiliary lights running while it's, quote, off. And it's one of the things that really confuses people when they first get a D4 or a KR4 is they don't know why it's not turning off. But it's really because this light is always on. Another way to think about it is it's like your TV, right? Your TV looks like it's off, but clearly it's not off all the way. Or else when you pressed the button on the remote, it wouldn't turn on for you. Devices that are truly off won't respond to remotes. So let's take a look at the e-switch. So again, there's a button on the back here. And when you tap it, it turns on. Tap it again, it turns off. But the trick here is since it's always on anyways, you can do fancy stuff. Like for example, from off, you can double tap and hold and do something like this. Tap, tap, hold, and go to candle mode, okay? So e-switches are a prerequisite for a UI like Endurial, which is very complicated, and depending on how you tap it, you can get into a lot of different modes. Another cool thing about e-switches is, for example, if I'm on, I can, let's say, double tap from on and go to turbo, or... When I, I just turned it off, let's go back on again. Now I'm going to tap, tap, hold, tap, tap, hold. I get momentary turbo, and when I let go, it goes back to on. So the interface and the e-switch, since it's always on, allows you to really record a series of taps and then make the right action, you know, it, you know according to what the UI says to do. So for example, like... From off, which it's not really off, right? It's on. If I do two taps, I go to high. But from on, I just turned it off, right? But from on, if I do the same two taps, now I'm on turbo. Now, you might not see the difference on camera, but it's about double the output. So it turns out that two taps, it's different depending on whether the state of the light is on or off. This is the kind of stuff you can do with an e-switch. Now, I guess the only real drawback to an e-switch is twofold. One is that in order to read the sequence of button presses you're using, sometimes there's a slight delay to actions. So for example, while it's off, when you go to turn it on, it's instantaneous, right? As soon as I tap it, this thing's gonna come on, watch. Tap, and it comes right on, no problem. But when I go to turn it off, I'm gonna tap it, and there's just a slight delay. Watch, and tap, wait, let's try it again, and tap. See that? There's like about a half a second delay. Let's try it again, turn it on, tap, no problem. Turn it off, tap. So the reason why for that delay is because think about it, the light's on, and it's trying to decide if you're pressing once, twice, three times. Are you going into the turbo menu or are you actually turning it off? So there's a little delay when it registers how many sequences of clicks you did and then decides to implement it. Now, there are, you know, modifications you can make to Endurial to change that behavior. 
but uh, that's the way Enduro is set up by default. Now, I don't mind that. I mean, as long as the light comes on immediately, I'm happy. Uh, that little slight delay doesn't bother me. Now, if it really did bother you, fortunately, Enduro has a momentary mode. So you can do five clicks, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, it just flashed once. And now, as soon as I press, it comes on. And as soon as I let go, it's off. So again, you know, it's like Enduro is very complicated. And that might be a downside to some about the uh, delay to turn off, but I don't really think it's an issue. But here's another thing about Endurial, and that is because the light is technically always on, when it sits here on your shelf, it's, you know, using up a little power over time. And depending on the manufacturer of the light, how efficient the driver is, other factors, uh, this drain could be negligible to massive. So it's usually a good idea with e-switch lights to actually unscrew the tail cap or the head, depending on the light, just a little bit. So notice I'll go just about eighth of a turn and then the aux light's turned off. That means power is now cut. So, you know, when I hit the button, nothing's gonna happen, okay? So with e-switches, since they're always on, that's something that I got in the habit of doing, which is just turning the cap just a little bit to make sure that they're stable when I store them. Now let's look at the final set of flashlights I have in the back here, which are really combination flashlights. Both of these flashlights have both an e-switch and a mechanical switch, and for different reasons. So let's take a look at the ace beam first. The ace beam has an e-switch on the side right here, and then a mechanical clicky on the back. Now, this light, when it's, you know, assembled like this, I don't, I don't have the tail cap unscrewed. It's, it's fully assembled. The E switch is receiving power. And when I tap it, it's going to turn on. Okay. So this E switch, again, it's not mechanical, so it must be getting power the whole time. Now this is a mechanical clicky on the back. And when I click it, it goes into turbo. So that's just the way Ace Beam has it set up. You got different modes here. You can click on and then hold and it cycles through modes. And then to go to turbo, you just click on this mechanical on the back. It goes to turbo. Then if you unclick it, it goes to off. Now, the interesting thing here is unclicking the mechanical switch doesn't cut power. This thing will drain. Again, I haven't measured it. It might be negligible, but there is power, and you know that because the e-switch is still registering. So that's just the way they got it set up, and truth be told, I really like this interface. It's kind of neat to have an e-switch, which you can switch between modes, but then just have instant turbo at the back. And also another kind of cool thing about it is signaling with this e-switch would be a real pain, but having the turbo on the back, you can just kind of tap out some Morse code or something. And this switch happens to be a, you guessed it, since I'm barely tapping, it's turning on, and then you push and it clicks, that is a forward clicky. So um, if they had included a reverse clicky on the back, then I wouldn't be able to tap out uh, Morse code or something like that, and it wouldn't make much sense. So Ace Beam, they know what they're doing. Uh, you got the convenience of an e-switch for modes, but then you got that uh, instant turbo access and uh, you know, the ability to signal. Now let's take a look at the Convoy L7 here, which has an e-switch on the side and a mechanical clicking on the back, but this time for a completely different reason. So in this light, it appears to me that the power is cut with this switch. So again, it's a forward clicky. If I do a half press, the light will come on. And if I keep pushing, it clicks and when I let go, it stays on. So that's forward clicky. Now, it's my understanding that this is cut, and so there's a uh, mechanical cut between the battery and the driver when this switch is out because the e-switch isn't operating when this is in the out position. Now, when I click it on, and so now I got power, then I can click through here and do the modes. Now, this has a different style of UI than the Ace Beam. And truth be told, I like both of them. So what this gives me is, gives me a forward clicky I can signal or strobe with. It gives me a tactile switch I can get on or off immediately. But when I'm on, I can hit the mode I want with the E switch. And if I go to the highest, you know, 100, then when I click it off, 
that's now, quote, memorized. So there's not really any memorization except for the fact that, well, or maybe there's always memorization, meaning that whatever mode you were on is where you're going to be when you click on again. Okay. And I kind of like the simplicity of that. It just, it's real straightforward. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you look at the ACE beam here, when I turn it on, it's on, I don't know, I guess it's a medium. Let's click it. Let's uh, turn it on. Yep. It's still on medium. Let's go to a higher mode. When I turn it off, when I turn it back on, it'll be there again. So that's kind of an instant memorization as well. However, when I hit turbo and I click it off, when I hit the E switch, let's see what happens. See, it's not on turbo. It's back on high because let me hit turbo and you can see it gets brighter. So, I mean, it's not too tough to understand, but there's little added complexity here. There's something really nice about the fact that it's got four simple modes and you click it on and off and this cycles between them. So it just, it just seems really simple. It's like I put it on low, I click it off. Next time I turn it on, I know right where it is. It's on low. I want to go to high, then click, 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 turn it off and it's on high. I kind of like the uh, simplicity of that. And also, since it is clicking between the modes, it's not like on this one where you have to click and hold. So that's uh, a little difference between the way this works. So I hope you uh, found that interesting. Um, is there a best switch? Mm, not really. I mean, it just depends on how you're using it. Maybe even just the mood you're in that day. Uh, that's one of the reasons I have so many different kinds of lights with different switches. Uh, I kind of find utility in all of them, and uh, I don't, I can't say 100% that I like one more than another. Sometimes people make a big deal about mechanical switches versus e switches. Uh, it doesn't matter to me too much. I mean, as I said, there's that power drain thing with the e switches, but I just mechanically lock it out. No big deal. Uh, when it comes to mechanicals themselves, and you're taking a look at four clickies versus reverse, I guess I would prefer forward clickies just because I like the idea of um, signaling. It just That seems nice. And I don't mind clicking it all the way off to switch modes. Um, if you're looking at this, by the way, and saying, well, how would you signal with this because it's going in between modes? Well, what you do is you would set up a mode group where it was only 100%. And then that way, every time you clicked it, it would just be at 100% every time. And if you find that annoying, uh, the fact that you have to change the mode groups to get to a reasonable Morse code or momentary mode, just think about the fact that on reverse clickies, you really don't have that option at all because I'm half pressing, nothing's coming out. You forward click all the way, it turns on, and then you're cycling between modes and it never turns off. So... Um, I guess I guess what I'm saying is, is if, if you did a lot of momentary mode or signaling, then I guess reverse clicky would be out. But let's face it, in my life, I don't really do any signaling. And even if I did, it wouldn't be so hard to just click it all the way on, click it all the way off. So easier modes, easier momentary. Eh, I guess it doesn't matter. All right, to bring it back to these guys for a second, the combination of e-switch and mechanical switches really does solve what we were just talking about between these two because then you get the ease of mode switches but you also get the momentary on the back of the light so maybe convoy and ace beam really got it nailed by using a combination we just spent the entire video talking about the butt side of the light if you will if you want to talk about the front end of the light and the difference between tiers, total internal reflection optics, and reflectors and other optics. Take a look at the other video I got linked here on screen right now that is about flashlight optics.